What's up? Flex is here and this video is a pure model review. This video is not on how to host or run Flux on your local machine because we're already hosting this on OpenArts. It's super accessible for use here like any other model that we have. First, I want to say this model being open source is really, really impressive. Let's dive right in and see if this mid-journey killer model actually killed mid-journey. I would like to summarize challenges for image models nowadays to be four things. The first thing is text. The second thing is people, getting the hands and fingers correct. The third thing is prompt adherence. And finally, knowledge. Now let's kind of test the knowledge plus text. By knowledge, I mean like, do you know what I'm talking about when I'm referring to a specific character? And if there's super strict copyright restrictions. I'm just gonna do Master Chief. Pretty good, it's not the best. Majorini can probably do better from this. But one thing I've noticed, by the way, is that Flux tends to give you what you ask for. So if I only put in a very simple prompt without any descriptions of the environment, the background, or other elements, it's not gonna really like fill in a bunch of different things for me, whereas Midjourney does. But now let's make it a bit harder. Master Chief holding a sign saying, no, I think we're just getting started. That's exactly how I feel about the Flux model. Wait, is that Boba Fett? <laughs> okay, this is hilarious. I think they look too similar. Flex mixes up um, the Mandalorian armor and the Halo armor. But if we're looking at the text and the hands and fingers, they look pretty good. Really weird stuff sometimes. And it's really stubborn about giving me this cable thing. Yeah, and I'm thinking maybe a stressing Master Chief from Halo would help. And instead of a sign, I'm thinking a speech bubble. It looks like that fixed the issue of Flux mixing up the two things. The top row is after I added the from Halo and no, I think we're just getting started. This one's pretty cute. I like this. I really like this. Um, oh, but spelled it a little bit wrong. You know what? This one's super easy to fix. Like we can just erase this part and this picture will be usable. And um, it left out the just. The text on this one's also pretty good, but this is an extra speech bubble that we didn't want. Yeah, adding the word halo really did help solve the problem. Like this one's pretty good too. And I also like these speech bubbles. Oh. I did notice though Flux really likes to throw in watermarks. Probably most definitely train on some watermarked materials, but who doesn't? If you want to remove AI artifacts like that, you can also check out my other video about the AI remover. Super handy tool to use. By the way, this is the same prompts for Ideogram and Midjourney. A cat looking mad on a table with screaming speech bubbles saying meow with four W's. And this one I really care about if it gave me a screaming speech bubble. So I would say this one's pretty good. The speech bubble has a really sharp edges. This one's also pretty nice. And I really like the font. It really brings out the emotion. Seems like it's very hard to get the number of W's correct. Close enough. Ideogram still does a better job at text. The accuracy is a lot better and the text looks more naturally fitted into the image. It still makes mistakes. Like printing V instead of W. Water splashing, reflective and clear texture, shiny and jelly-like. Text printing, time to drink water. This one's kind of cool. The text font, color, and the position they place the text. They make up like a pretty aesthetic image. I want to say that this is kind of cool. Here are my favorite ones. The is is smaller than the other words. And it gave us an extra period. Because maybe it's cooler to add a period there. I don't know, but this one's pretty amazing. This one as well, it did a similar thing. And the position of the text is also really aesthetic. 
and here I got some other cool ones. This is a really different faded retro vibe. I love the water texture of this one and the text is pretty darn good. My favorite part about Flux is that when you generate multiple images, it doesn't give you variations of the same thing. It can really come up with creative angles, especially with people. For example, person working in front of a computer with headset on. Now I didn't specify which type of work. This dude is probably some sort of a mix of a gamer and a finance bro. And then this picture is kind of crazy. You can even see the blurred out code in that computer and the format looks right and the color looks right. It just This one kind of creeps me out. I don't know how it was able to do that. And then this guy seems like he could be a sound engineer. It gives you all these, you know, creative dashboards. And I've never seen that before. Some sort of like a combination of a map and a DJ set. And this guy is a data scientist. This prompt is saying fashion model, cover photo, photography, masterpiece. We get this really nice backlight without the model makeup, the contour, the bronze. And my absolute favorite part is the texture is definitely some of the best I've ever seen with this one too. Very aesthetic color palette and this jacket, all the sewing, the material, just stunning. This level of detail is so rare. And it has the best text and image layout capabilities. When it's trying to make a magazine cover photo, obviously these are all filler texts, they don't mean anything, but you get this really nice layout for you to work with. It knows where to leave it blank. It knows to match up the pink. And the color palette of the text matches the color palette of the person. With this one as well, it's black, white, and orange. And it matches the model colors. Let's take it somewhere else for benchmarking. So this is mid-journey. As always, it's really, really aesthetic, really high quality, but it's not giving me a sleek layout. Ideogram is good, right? But I just think this is very, very impressive. And I'm really excited for what's next. Flux is so impressive with the hands, it can even handle some more complex hand gestures. Like two friends making a heart gesture with their hands. This image is just... I'm speechless. This is so good. It looks so real. Sometimes the people have less natural poses. Some of them, like, I don't really know what's going on. Wow, that's a double heart. I don't even know how to do that. Wow. Um, this one's funny. Mm. But do you see what I mean with the creative angles? Like, that's a really creative angle, even though it f up the hands. And this one's also really cute. It's kind of like a more casual heart gesture. But I guess something like this is really hard to do. Um, I was hoping to get this, but... Now for reference, Ideogram can also get it right sometimes, but with a slightly lower hit rate, the faces become really weird. Um, Midjourney cannot do these hands. And it's even harder to comment on DALI 3. From my experience these two days, Midjourney is still a bit better in general. We're seeing Flux catching up really, really quickly. If you want to use Flux, OpenR is giving all users 20 Flux images for free every day. And there's also DALI 3, Stable Diffusion 3, Colors, and a bunch of other great models. We're so happy about the Flux launch. This is what we like to see. They're all really great models and they have like different personalities. There are more Flux examples about people, hands, and prompt adherence in part 2. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I put all useful links under the video in the description. Have fun creating!